time the Lord when the Lord comes to worship me more than to sing praises to you, Father. We just love you, Lord. We depend on you for everything, Lord. And we just want to lift you up this morning, Father, before we do anything. Thank you for the many blessings, Father, that you bestow upon each and every one of us. Even though there's problems and issues at times, most of the time we are blessed. Thank you, Lord, for that. Lord, we have so many on our prayer list this morning, Lord, that we want to lift up to you their needs, the issues in their families, their lives, Lord, whatever they may be. Lord, we just want to stand in the gap, Father, and lift them up to you, knowing, Lord, that you're really the only one that's able to help them in any way, Father. Lord, just um, be with each and every one of them, Lord, and bless them, Lord, in a mighty way. First, Lord, we just want to ask that you would be with the families, Lord, this week that have lost loved ones, uh, the Joanne Scott family, the Levi Long family, and then, of course, we lost Mr. Frederick this week, and we just pray for all those families and friends, Lord, of those, Lord, and just give them peace and understanding at this time. And, Lord, for all the families, Lord, that have family members, Lord, or close friends, Lord, that have this COVID, especially the ones in the nursing homes, Father, we just lift them up to you this morning. We pray for the uh, nurses and doctors, Lord, that are trying to uh, wait on them, Lord, and give them the medical attention that they need, Lord. We just ask, God, that you would just be in that situation. Lord, we lift up uh, Arnold and Isla Dream to you this morning. Arnold's in the hospital, and we just pray, God, that you would lead and guide the doctors and that he has the best doctors possible to give out what they need to help him at this time. Continue to be with Bob and Jane and Eunice and her family. Lord, we're just thankful that Mary Bird is able to be back with us today, and we just ask that you would continue to work in her life. Uh, Lord, be with the others. Donna Brown, uh, that's not feeling well. Alan Hagel's father. Uh, be with Pam as she's recuperating from knee surgery. Uh, then Renee's family, her boys are in Louisiana, and her husband's sister uh, is in critical condition. Father, we just ask that you would watch over them and care for them and be with Renee and her family, Lord. We lift up Joyce to you, Lord, and ask that you would continue to touch her. Uh, Moretta Landon, Judy Brock, that lost her husband, and now she has COVID, Lord, just be with them. Betty Moorhead, P. Hull, that's recuperating from back surgery. Uh, Lord, we lift Bird up to you this morning and the medical issues that she has. First of all, Lord, we just pray that you would give her peace about the situation. We pray that she has the best doctors possible, Lord, and that they would be able, Lord, to help her, Lord, with her issues. Thank you, Lord. We lift up the Carol that will have surgery on her eye. We lift up Grandma's daughter that's recuperating from back surgery, and Lord, just pray that you would help her be able to cope with the pain. We lift up Linda to you that she's still battling issues with her back. Father, just touch her. We lift up Marlene's mother-in-law, Dolly Wright. Lord, just pray that you would touch her body, God. And that for Deborah Burkett, Donna Music's mother, we just lift her up to you, God, and ask that you would watch over her, Lord, and, and it's our heart's desire that you would heal her, Father. And we just ask that you would be with uh, Donna and Donald as they care for her. Then we lift up Josephine. They take care of her also. So we just ask, God, that you would be with them. Give them the strength that they need to take care of their mother. And, Lord, as always, I know that we all have unspoken requests on our hearts. <coughs> we all have family members that are not saved, they do not give you a thought, and we just 
just pray for that situation, God. That if there's anything, God, that we can say or do, Lord, that would make them look to you, I pray, Father, that you would reveal it to us. Now, Father, we just ask that you would be with Mandy as she takes us through this lesson. Just ask that you bless her, and we're glad also that she's back. Be with Paul as he leads the morning service this morning. God, and as always, it's our heart's desire that no one leaves here this morning without knowing you as our Lord and Savior. Amen. Uh, Bert, will you uh, be ready to read two through four? And, what am I uh, reading? Not yet. Renee, will you read five through eight? And Carol, will you do nine through eleven? And Linda, will you do twenty through twenty-four and twenty-eight? Okay. As we begin the new quarter, we will discover that love is the key word. In Unit One, it illustrates a preserving, um, a preserving love, a pers persevering love. Excuse me. It illustrates a, pe a persevering love, and if it, if it perseveres, it means it just continues and continues. The strife and hard feelings with Joseph's families are seen in today's lesson. The struggle with love is traced to Jacob, his father, where favoritism appears to have been the primary parenting skill. Even in Genesis 25, 28, it tells us that, Esau, uh, that Isaac loved Esau and that Rebekah loved Jacob. And we know that the two brothers did not get along, and we know why, because of that. Bias love, that's what they title our lesson today, and that's what these parents said. They had bias love. One loved one son more than the other son, and one parent loved one more than the other one did. So bias love is dangerous, and we will see the results of it in our lesson today. Our lesson is divided into three parts, a family discord, a brother's dreams, and the brother's disdain, or hatred, if you don't like the word disdain. So our first part is a, is a family's discord, so we'll see what Genesis 37, 2 through 4 says. These are the generations of Jacob. <clears throat> Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. The lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah, his, his father's wives, and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Joseph, now Israel, Israel loved Joseph more than all of his children because he was a son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Now keep in mind that Jacob is Israel, or Israel is Jacob. Once he rested, wrestled with God, he changed, God changed his name. Okay, so it's not the 12 tribes of Israel. He is actually called Israel also. So the phrase, these are the generations of, emphasizes the continuation of life and introduces stories concerned with those lives. Preferential treatment foreshadows the family's dynamic as our story unfolds. We don't know what the evil report Joseph brings to his father, and it really doesn't matter. But the report can be one of the reasons for their animosity. Jacob also demonstrated favoritism to Joseph because he is a son born in, his, in Joseph's late life. He is old at this point. Keep in mind that this son is only 17, so all the other sons are much, much older. And also he was born to his favorite wife. Of Leah, and Ra of Leah and Rachel, he loved Rachel more. So she finally has a child, and so he really loves that child more than I guess the other ones do, or at least they think so. Even though Jacob has 11 children, Jacob further shows favoritism, so if that wasn't worse enough, he makes him a coat of many colors. And by simply looking at Joseph in that coat, his brethren could see their father's love in him over them. So that's the first part. So, but keep in mind, and it's, uh, and it's in the lesson, but I didn't type it in, but I'll give you just a little gist. Uh, God made promises to Jacob, and through what happens here with Joseph, some of these promises are fulfilled at that time. So these instances have to happen for those promises to be fulfilled, and they will be fulfilled. All right, five through eight. This is that brother's dream. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told his brethren, that they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here, I pray thee, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we are binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheath arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood around about, 
and made obeisance to my sheep. And this brethren and his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us, or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more of his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brother, and his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brother envied <clears throat> him, but his father observed the same. So in this section, we have two dreams. These verses consist of these two dreams that I just talked about. Those are celestial and grain harvest. Even though they are separate, the second dream helps to confirm the first dream. Joseph's brothers hated him because of his dreams. However, God spoke in this manner numerous times in the Bible to communicate this issue. And we can name some of those right off the top of our heads. I mean, seriously, they're in the Old Testament, they're in the New Testament. And it's really, in a way, ironic because his son is dreaming dreams. And guess who else had a dream? Jacob himself had had dreams. Remember when he t God told him to leave his father-in-law and go? That was a dream. So even, Joseph, even Jacob has dreamed dreams. We know Joseph in the New Testament, uh, God spoke to him in dreams and visions and told him to take the mother and go into Egypt. So this is not an unusual thing of God talking to his people through the process of dreams. However, he does choose the youngest son. But anyway, we see that part. So God does communicate through dreams. Goes on to say, so this is the first dream. It uses the grain harvest. So we, they are agricultural, so we would all understand this issue. Grain once gathered was stacked in sheaves. In the dream, the brother's sheaves will bow down or worship. And it says in the Bible there, it says, giving obedience to Joseph. This causes them to hate him even more. Now, if they hated him because of favoritism with a coat of many colors and the evil report, I'm sure they got in trouble with their father with, this just kind of stuck the needle in a little bit further. So they hated him even yet the more. The second dream talks about these celestial bodies. The stars represent the 11 brothers, actually 10 brothers, because the other brother is Benjamin, and he's not born yet. So it actually represents these 10 brothers. The sun and the moon represents the parents as well as their sister. Now, do keep in mind, these brothers, Jacob did have one daughter. So, it, so the sun and the moon represent the parents and the sister. The stars represent the sons. Uh, <clears throat> Jacob rebukes Joseph for sharing his dream, but apparently he didn't do a very good white job of it. But anyway, he does try to rebuke him. It does tell you that in your scripture. And he said, and he will watch. He will observe these sayings. Now, I don't know what he did, but he said he would observe these sayings. But anyway, <clears throat> however, his brothers, this hatred that they have has now turned to envy. Envy is worse than hatred. Envy with has, leads to the possibility of violence on their part. Now, if you keep in mind what we just read here, it is fulfilled in a couple other chapters later on down the road. His brothers will bow down to him. He is sold into Egypt. He will be second to Pharaoh. There will be a famine. Uh, they will come to Egypt to buy grain. They do not recognize him. And guess what they have to do? They will bow down. So this promise does come true. Even though Joseph probably doesn't like being in slavery, but he is raised, and God does prosper him. So this will happen when you continue to read the next couple chapters in Genesis. Our third part then, because of all this has happened, these ten brothers really, this, this, this hatred just really festers inside of them. So it's called the brothers' disdain or hatred. And that is 23, 24, and 28. And it came to pass when Joseph was coming to his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him, and they took him and cast him into a pit. Then there passed by Mennonites, merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph into Egypt. So the brothers plan, make their plan as Joseph approaches them. 
They strip him of his coat as a symbol of stripping him of his status as Jacob's favorite. Then they pretend that he is dead. They kill a goat from the flock. They soak the coat in, the, in its blood, providing evidence so when they go home and tell their father Joseph is dead, they got a bloody coat to prove it. That's all that's remaining of him, okay? As a caravan of these Midianites pass by, on their way to Egypt, they're taking their myrrh and spices and things that they would sell. The brothers decide to sell Joseph as a means of enacting their revenge. And at the same time, their hands will be clean of any shed of blood because they're not going to kill him. Now, they had planned actually to kill him. One brother thinks he'll be able to come back and get him out of the hole and let him go back to his father. But their thoughts here, the other ones, they want to kill him. But by killing the goat, they will have their hands clean, so to speak. We know their hands aren't clean, but they will have their hands clean. And then, as I said, when you continue to read uh, Genesis, you'll see, quote, the rest of the story. Today's tragic episodes impress on us what favoritism can do and has done in families. Showing favoritism created hatred that festered. Mixed with envy, it erupts into violence. Bias love toward one son resulted in the others starving for their father's love and taking it out, taking out their neglect on the object of that affection. Still, God's sovereign plan and purpose moved forward under his guiding hand. He was told, Abraham was told they would go into Egypt. So this is God's guiding hand. This is God's guiding plan. Through Joseph, or though Joseph only saw slavery ahead of him, God saw the fulfillment of Joseph's dreams and the blessing he would be for his brothers. If he wasn't in Egypt providing for his brothers, they may not have made it during this famine. So God's plan, we don't always understand it, and it's hard sometimes when we're going through it. But God's plan was working out the way God had planned. In God's providential work through Joseph, we are reminded that God is never thwarted by the evil intentions of human beings. Though we struggle to see God at work in our trials today, he remains an unseen mover in our lives, just as in, as in Joseph's life. We, I, I used to teach a novel, and it was written in fragments, but I really liked that book. It was called, the one saying in there is about a boy in a, he's crashed in the wilderness. And he would say, easy to say, hard to do. It's easy to say, I can do, you know, we, everything is going fine. But when things aren't so fine, it's not easy to say. And that's kind of like Joseph. As long as things were going fine, it was easy. But being in Egypt, being thrown in, dun in the dungeon, being accused, because Potiphar's wife wanted him, he, he just had one hard knock after another. So I'm sure he did face a lot of, he did have a lot of struggle. But the thing about it is, he not only had these dreams that God gave him, God gave him the ability to interpret the dreams. So he was with him the whole way. Even though he was in trials. Think of us. He is with us the whole way. But it's hard when we're in that trial. Mary, would you mind closing us in prayer? Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be in your house today, Lord, just to worship praise to honor you to learn more about the word your word that you place in our hearts and our minds we just ask lord that you would open up, up our thoughts and my, uh, minds and hearts today to receive your word to understand that we need to love everyone we need to love family members the same and we need to love everyone the same we give you praise and glory in all things in jesus name we pray Amen. 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 Amen.